welcome again to another exciting reading, Read Aloud. I am your lovely host, Miss Disney, and happy St. Patrick's Day! Happy Leprechaun Day to all you lit wee little ones out there. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> I know, it's not very good. <sighs> anyway, we are going to continue a Twisted Tale anthology, and in our next reading, we are going to be reading... A royal game of chess. What if history wasn't quite right about the legend of Robin Hood by Liz Broswell? You know there's been a heap of legends and tall tales about Robin Hood. All different too. Well, we folks of the animal kingdom have our own version. It's the story of what really happened in Sherwood Forest. Alana Dale. Lady Marion, the maid servant, burst into her room breathlessly, feathers literally flying. They have caught Robin Hood. What? Maid Marion demanded, looking up from her hymnal. But that can't be. I am afraid it is, lass, Cluck said grimly. Both were silent for a moment. Then they burst out laughing. A few days earlier. A beautiful, if oversized, carriage slowly rode down the only road through Sherwood Forest. It was pulled by two war elephants, retired from active duty and earning a little extra in their later days by hauling around folks who probably didn't deserve such treatment. But the carriage, it was a gorgeous thing with a golden body and purple damask curtains to keep the sun and flies out. Every square inch of the interior was padded thickly with velvet and stuffed with eider down. Crowning the whole structure was an actual crown, a replica of King Richard's, cunning, cunningly carved from wood and foiled in gold to look like the real thing. Only, it wasn't King Richard riding in this stately manner. It was his younger brother, Prince John, along with his venomous, ever-present confidant, Sir Hiss. Sire, you have an absolutely amazing skill for encouraging contributions from the pool, Sir Hiss said, strangely enough, not hissing at all while he spoke. St. Patrick might have drummed all the legless and scaly beasts out of Ireland, eh? but this large and dun-colored representative of his genus was far too well connected to be so rudely removed from merely merry old England. Prince John smiled in a lionine way that was somewhere between a smirk and a warning yawn. To coin a phrase, my dear counselor, he drawled, admiring his unvelveted claws, rob the poor to feed the rich. Am I right? But tell me, what is the next stop, Sir Hiss? Let me see. Oh, yes, the next stop is Nottingham, sire. Aha, the richest plum of them all. Nottingham. You see what I did there? It's a ham, because it's rich and fatty. Yes, very drool, your highness. Your talents are endless. Driver, what's the hold up? Sir Hiss stuck his very long, scaled neck out the window as the carriage slowed to a bonderous halt. The false king stuck his head out the other window in his impatience to see, much like a small child. Oh, Sir Hiss, it's a carnival. Fortune tellers. Oh, let us have our fortunes read. The crown he wore. Not quite the one duplicated on top of the carriage. Even Prince John had his limits. Tipped precariously on his oversized head with his excitement. Sire, this is not advisable. They could be bandits. Sir Hiss narrowed his eyes suspiciously, which was in and of itself suspicious. Since snakes have terrible vision in general, it was only for show. His forked tongue did flicker in and out, but it was unlikely he could taste the sort of colorful, drapey garments worn by the women waving at them from the middle of the road, or the sparkling crystals one of them held aloft. Of course you know what happens next. One mystic praised and prattled to Prince John, snuggling up to him inside the carriage, the creakiness of her voice be beliled by the slender com comeliness. 
of the, her paws, their deafness as well. In short order, the prince had lost. In in short order, the prince had lost several rings and even the brooch that held his voluminous vol sleeve back. And while she endlessly told Prince John what a magnificent fort future he would have, the other seers slunk, slunk around the back of the carriage and handedly retrieved several bags of gold. Eventually, the show was over and the carriage rolled on, a little lighter than before. It would be some time before Sir Hiss managed to convince his boss that they had been had. The two fortune tellers watched the prince go, barking fox laughter and slapping their knees at the idiocy of their marks. Finally, the leader flung a cloak around her body, disguising the disguise of her colorful clothes in silver stars. Here, she said, handing her co-conspirator co the ring she had pur purloined. Take these to little John. He could sell them to Mansfield without such much suspicion. You've been there too often yourself to sell royal jewels. Even criminal pawnbrokers can get suspicious. I'll go into Nottingham and distribute the coins now. Just be careful, Marion. I mean, Robin, the other fox said, his very masculine voice in stark contrast to the de delicate threads he wore. That old sheriff may be a dummy, but even a dummy gets an idea once in a while. I'll always be careful, Red. Robin Hood said with a smile. The two foxes kissed and scurried away to their separate businesses.